testing to make sure that we're in a good spot, a good season, that when we need to do transmitter radio, you will still be able to pull up on the parking lot, but yet stay in your cars with your windows rolled up, amen, while we are still having service live, and you can hear it from your radio. Amen, if that's what you choose. Amen, so please be patient with us as we continue to work to make things good and to make things work in this season. How many of you know this is a different season? Amen, and we have to do what we have to do to make things work. We'll keep you updated on every move that we make. Amen, amen. Kick your feet out the door. Kick your feet out the door. Yeah, God's doing a new thing. Oh, yes, he is. Get ready. coming today. All right, that's right. Get excited. Our singles are coming today. And I want you all to know that it is okay to be single. You see that? See, I got some people clapping their hands. They say, Pastor, you always talk. 
We always talk about and talk to the married people, but what about the single people? And what about the single that want to be married, that's going to get married? So it's going to be okay. It's going to be easy. And we're just going to be blessed. Amen? Amen. Buy it. The, the Quran is going to minister to us just a little bit. Amen. And then we're going to move right into hearing what we want to hear and what we need to hear from our singles. Amen? Amen. That's saved. And they're sanctified, but not satisfied. I want the saints to tell the truth.
single just means you're not married. Let's not get it mixed up. Amen. Being single based on the word of God is a gift. Based on 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. Read that whole 1 Corinthians 7 chapter piece. It's a gift. Amen. So I got two of my best singles. Amen. They're standing behind me. Sister Jaquita Johnson. We call her Kiki. Amen. And Brother Andre Gaskin. They are both professionals. They both have their own jobs, their own cars, their own money, their own places to stay. And guess what? They are saved. And they are, wait a minute, let's put this in here. They are givers. They are, they sacrifice to the Lord. Come on now. They aren't parents yet. They are parents by, by uh, extended parents. Amen. Amen. Andre loved children. He loves children, amen, and will do whatever and give to them and support them, amen, amen. So I want you all to know that being single is a gift from God based on 1 Corinthians, amen, the seventh chapter. As Paul wrote and said, it is a gift. It is a gift. So it shouldn't be looked down for a certain age and have not gotten married yet. Am I talking right? I'm still everybody that I was, even if I had somebody beside my side. I'm still that. See, first you have to be content with you. You got to be satisfied. I'm telling you, I'm talking Bible talk. You got to be content with you first. And when you're content with you, everybody doesn't have the gift of singleness. So we're going to hear from, we're going to hear from a female perspective. And from a male perspective right. on, they all only have, and then we're going to hear from single, married, divorced, and then single again. All Amen. Right. They all have about three to five minutes, so I promise you it's going to bless you real good. Come on, Kiki. Ladies first. Yes, I'm going to give you a question. Okay. And my question to you, how has it been in this pandemic season being single home alone well actually I'm an introvert so being single at home alone hasn't bothered me sometimes people say sometimes you need to get out because your man is not going to find you at home but I'm okay being at home I just like being at home and when people invite me places I kind of get upset because you disturb in my alone time but I like being alone sometimes you know I'm unsatisfied I go looking but sometimes I'm just okay being alone. Amen. Amen. All right, all right. From the male perspective, living in the pandemic and being single, home alone. Like Kiki, home alone really don't bother me. If I drive trucks, I'm alone all the time. So if you're <laughs> home, it's the same thing. But um, I do get bored sometimes, so you gotta learn how to go out and do things yourself. Right. Yeah, get out there and move with yourself, eat dinner by yourself, yeah. and just be happy with within yourself. Right. Yeah. So this pandemic has been alright, but you say you gotta live for yourself. You gotta be happy with yourself. It can be better for somebody else. Yeah. Because you can't go to a relationship unhappy because you gotta. You have to be yourself to make somebody else happy. Come on, you can't Jay. go with the baggage Come on. at all. So I'm doing pretty good so far. Did you hear what he said? You don't need to go with baggage. Right. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You don't need to come with baggage. I know the single people are going crazy right now. You don't need to be uh, carrying the baggage. Be happy. He said be happy within yourself. That's coming from a male perspective. Be good within yourself. My next question to my singles who've never been married, never been married, home alone, and he touched on it a little bit, eating alone. Dinner and, and meals are very special. And what, how do you adjust and how have you adjusted in this season 
Now, I didn't get married until I was 48, so I know, but some people need to know, how do you embrace it? Because we're in a very peculiar area, in a peculiar time. In this season, how can you embrace, you know, when you do, when the, when the hotels and, when the hotels, when the restaurants came back open? Yeah. How was your movement? Well, I can honestly say that the pandemic taught me how to cook because I was the one who cooked. I was always going to Longhorn, Kiku, you know, all of the restaurants. Old Charlie's, hey, that was me. Uh, Piccadilly, that was me. But the pandemic has taught me how to cook. And my family is super, they're very proud of me because I bought me some dishes. Hey, I, I'm, getting, I'm getting it. I got me some dishes, some utensils. I'm cooking, so I'm going to be ready. Yes. Get ready, get ready. Come on, let's see, can the man cook? Can the single man cook? I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> I can do a little, little something. Like Kiki said, I be out eating, whatever. But with YouTube and stuff, I see stuff come right across Facebook, stuff I like. I go buy stuff and try it myself. That's right, so, that's right. Eating better and healthier, 25 pounds lighter. Come on now, come on now, yeah. So, yeah, I've been practicing okay. myself. You can say it got to be a blessing to somebody, so you got to learn to cook, too. Amen. Yes. Hey, man, Dre, you blessing, man. He said you got to be a blessing to somebody, so you got to learn how to cook yourself. My God, my God. Amen. What a blessing. Now, I just want this last question, this last thought, and you all can give me your statement, and then we'll have Smith coming and, and our Pastor Mark is going to come. My last question is the whole saved piece. You are saved. You love God. Both of you all do. I know I've been pastoring you all for, for several years, for 17, 18, almost 19 years. Being saved and walking in your singleness. What challenge have that presented? Or has it presented a challenge? Say. That's because, see, we operate out of our flesh. Right. Now, come on now. Mm -hmm. I'm not satisfied. Let me, let, me, let me open this gate right here. Yes. I'm not satisfied. I'm a grown person. I really do want to be married. Sometimes. And then sometimes I may not want to. I really do want to be in relationship. Sometimes. And as grown people, yeah, we we have to we have to listen to our we listen a lot of times. We don't have to, but we listen a lot of times to our flesh. And our flesh tell us we weak and we want to do what we want to do. All right. Am I being good with that? True. Yes. We don't talk about things that really help the people of God a lot of times. We don't really talk about love, sex, and marriage and money. We don't talk about those things and then we are upset and we're mad. When somebody goes out, a young lady goes out, a young man goes out and make a mistake and have uh, become impregnated, amen. Well, we, were, we never talked about it. And so maybe we need to talk about it because you don't have to get that way, amen. Our flesh may be weak, amen, and we have to understand when we have those weak moments, we're saved, we have to know what to do, amen. And sometimes we don't want to go to the scripture. The saints don't want to be, I'm trying to get the saints free from it because you married and you didn't go to the scripture. Now, tell the truth. We didn't go to the scripture. We, we went to our flesh. So the challenge is, in those challenging times, the challenge is being saved, what you have encountered and how you have sustained. You bring up a good point because I don't think that we've been taught how to date, say, we yes. date um, the world's way. Yes. And then when we find that person that fits, we, talk, we then be, become evangelistic and we do evangelistic dating. Because when we found him, he may not be spiritual, but he, he go to church, he know God. But then we begin to become evangelistic and pray that God changes him, make him fit to our level of spirituality so that's when it becomes evangelistic dating i think we need to do more um learning how to teach us you to better preach. Stay because we usually do the world's way that's right this is just like 
But you said, um, would you date the world's way just to for to have somebody? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm you get say. lonely, you're gonna go out on a date. Yeah. You know what's right, yeah. but you still like. She said she goes to church. She said she can do this. Come on, Jay. Right. It's so um, long. Right. <laughs> but anyway, um, like I said, um, you got to find somebody that believes the same thing you believe. Yes. And people sometimes tell you what you want to hear yes. to get you where you want to be. Yes. Get them. And that's what they say they are. Yes. Right? Yes. So I learned to like to move so fast and let people show you. Yeah, who they are. Yeah. Come on now. Uh, just take your time to do it slow. Absolutely. Yeah. Take your time and do it slow. Yeah. Come on, let's celebrate our singles. Was that good? He said, people are tell you who they said that was awesome. Come on, come on, come on. Our elders are coming. Amen. Our elder Bridget Smith is coming now. Following yeah. that, Pastor Mark Twyman, he's going to close us out. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. These are single. Married, divorced, and then single again, and not satisfied, and still got somebody. All right. <laughs> I want the sex to get free. Now, tell the truth. Amen. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. This is family. You have tuned in Facebook Live, YouTube Live. You have tuned in to Family Enrichment Month, November to remember here at Greater. Elder Bridget Smith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for the things that he has done and yet to do in our lives. Oh my God, my God. My God. Well, yes. I've been single. Hallelujah. <laughs> I was married. I'm yes. Right. I'm right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And guess what? I was divorced. Amen. I married my high school sweetheart. I'm right. Amen. But before I go any further, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm right. I'm right. God, I thank you for this day, God. For this is still the day that you have made. So I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this hour. God, I ask that you save, set free, and deliver in the name of Jesus, God. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. It's in the name of Jesus that the people of God said amen. So we said we're single, save, and not satisfied. Married, divorced single again. Yes, I've been married. I married my high school sweetheart, the love of my life. I, I, I put four, four children through school of a one income. I, I, I didn't understand, Pastor, why did God had me in this place? And then, then here come two more children I got to feed of a one income. Come on, somebody. I, I, I didn't understand, Pastor. I didn't understand why God had me in this place. But the Bible clearly states, it teaches us to be content or oh, somebody, no matter what our circumstances are. Over in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse number 11, the Bible said, Paul said, I have learned in what somebody. The Amplified Bible describes being content and satisfied to the point where you are not disturbed or disquiet. It doesn't say, Pastor, satisfied to the point where you don't want to change, but satisfied for now until God brings a change. Come on, somebody. I am content. Content where I am. Content where God has taken me. But more importantly, I'm confident and knowing who God is and what he's doing in my life and knowing that he has a plan for me. Plans to prosper and not to harm me. Plans to give me hope and a future. Come on, somebody. I, I, I realize, Pastor Twyman, that being single and living the single life, the ultimate goal, Kiki, is to have a closer 
to walk with Jesus. Come on, somebody. All our souls belong to God. Whether you're single, divorced, married, or even a widow, he has no respectable person. Isaiah 50 and 7 said, talks about fix your face like flint. Not to be ashamed because you're single, but I understand being single is a gift from the Lord. So, so, so let me encourage you, my single folks. I want you to stay focused. I want you to keep yourself busy. You know the story about Naomi and Ruth. Ruth was in the field, Kiki. She was working and being busy. She wasn't thinking about Junebug. She wasn't thinking about Rocky or Ricky. But she had her mind stayed on Jesus. She said, if I stay focused and I stay faithful, God sent her a Boaz. He didn't send her Bozo. He sent her Boaz. So you got to stay focused and keep yourself busy working in the field, working for the ministry, and working to please God. Come on, somebody. God will send you what you need when you need it if you stay focused. God puts us through these situations to get us to a better situation. So embrace it. Acknowledge it and move on. But in the meantime, Jessica, when he finds you, he finds a good thing. Your goods are good. Hallelujah in the house. The Bible tells us when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. Make sure you are a godly woman. Make sure you are material. Make sure you get your house in order. Keep your house in order. Learn how to wash the clothes. Learn how to fold the clothes. And learn how to take care of you. Learn how to cook a meal. I tell you, COVID-19 has taught me how to cook. My children say, Mama, what you doing? I said, I'm preparing myself for my bozo. Hallelujah, somebody. My boys, the bozo gone. Lord have mercy. You got to pray for your husband. Just as he was there already. You got to pray for him just as he was laying next to you every morning. You get up and say, good morning, baby. How you doing? Enjoy the blessings of each other. You know the story about Isaac 
and Rebecca, Boaz and Ruth, Zechariah and Elizabeth, Priscilla and Aquila. What about Joseph and Mary? When you see the weeds growing in your marriage, my brother Harold said when he was a young boy, the Lord told him, when you see the weeds growing in your marriage, he said you better kill it right then. Right. Don't wait and let them feed weeds and whisper in your marriage and in your house and in your relationship. Kill it. Trust and believe God. All is well in the Holy Ghost. I got to get out of here. It's okay to date again, my single friends. It's okay. Make sure you seek God for Christ's sake. Keep folk at your business. Learn to keep your mouth closed. Social media don't need to know everything. Don't bring that foolishness from your past relationship into the new relationship. Don't worry about how much money he got. Don't worry about, just thank God, Cletus got a job. If he had to work two jobs. Don't worry about what kind of car he drive or what side of the railroad track he come from. Because when you seek God, you make your request known unto him. And he will give you the desires of your heart. So I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, stay focused, stay faithful, and stay in God's face. And my name is Elder Bridget Smith, and I approve this message. I didn't want to come up behind her. I know it. It's all right. I knew she was going to preach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, she has it in her. Amen. So, I'm just going to talk. Can I talk? Can come I talk? Come on. Talk for a minute. Say Amen. It. I think you all realize by now I'm pretty transparent. <clears throat> so, uh, let me start because we're dealing with single, married, divorced, single again. All right. Uh, I'm going to come to you from a perspective of a pastor. Uh, and let me start by saying this. Uh, in, 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 in your single days, particularly for my men, you have to understand that God looked at man and said, it's not good for man to be alone. And so he, he understands because when Adam looked around, and I'm not going to hold on, but when he looked around, he saw two giraffes, he saw two lions, he saw two flies, he saw two roaches, he saw two seals. But then when he looked, he was by himself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so he he wanted, God saw that, that there was companionship that a man needed. And so I, I want to stop right there for all of our single people out here. And, and please understand this. Uh, when people say, uh, I don't need anybody, I got the Lord. Let me, let, me, let, me let me tell you something. The devil is a liar right there. Because God ain't going to... God ain't going to slip up in your bed and hug on you and love on you. Uh, Y'all ain't got to say nothing up in here. Your relationship with God is spiritual. Oh, God. Look at somebody say, it's spiritual. It ain't physical. It's spiritual. Go on and preach. I might as well talk about it. So, 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 so as a pastor, me as a pastor, I, I, I. But, but but here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. See, because I'm I'm passionate about what I do. Yeah. I'm passionate about ministry. I'm yeah. passionate about church. I'm passionate about the things of God. Uh, but the problem is that sometimes you can allow your drive to interfere with your marriage. Yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 the issue, and I can only speak for myself, is. Uh, 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 there, there were arguments because I was never taught correctly, see, because I put my ministry before my marriage. And here's what I learned, ladies and gentlemen. She, see, see my, my, my ex-wife, she didn't marry a profession. She married a person. My dog. 
So, so, so there were a lot of unnecessary things that took place. Uh huh. Can, can, can we just talk for a minute? And so, and so, and so, every now and then, when 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 you ought to be with your wife or be with your or be with your husband, you got to learn how to tell the saints no. I'm sorry, me and my significant other, we are hanging out today. No scripture, no prayer. Matter of fact, didn't pastor just teach you how to pray? Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta pray for yourself. That's right. So, so I, I just want to encourage the married folks. Don't don't ever let your profession come before the prayers. Now, 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 the divorce issue. All right, all right. Here's what I learned because, <sighs> see, when we stand before the preacher and, and, and we say these words from the scripture says, and, 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 and the two become one flesh, here's what happens in divorce. This is why divorce hurts so much. Because you have two that are one flesh. What the divorce does, it takes the flesh in it. And it rips it. So you want to know where the pain really comes from. The pain comes from the flesh is being ripped now. It's being ripped apart. And God never created. Now I just got, I just got to talk about what I'm talking about. Because I can't ignore the scripture. God never intended marriage for divorce. I'll say that again for somebody who wants the real truth. God never intended marriage for divorce. But thank God for his grace yeah. and for his mercy. Yeah. And so I want to share with you that, that, that through that course and learning everything that I had to learn and learning how to be humble and learning how to serve my, listen, you got to learn how to serve in your marriage. You got to learn to put the other person before you. Ain't nobody got to say that up in here. I know I'm telling the truth. And so I'm single again. All right. And Rakia, I struggle. I struggle. I, I do. I struggle because, let me tell you why I struggle. Because I'm afraid to mess it up again. Mm. People always ask me, why won't you get married again? Why I, I, I hope y'all can handle this. You, you do know I, I am still human. But, 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 but I struggle. I do. I struggle. I struggle because 50% of me wants to be married again. The other side said, no, back up. See? And I've gotten to an age... I got to age, and, and I'm about to get out of your way, but I've got to age now that hips and curves don't move me. Oh, all right. Oh. <laughs> your eyelashes, your fingernails, your weave, your, your, your red bottom shoes. No, baby, I need to see something a little bit more than that. Do you know how to pray? I, I, do you know how to turn over your plate, Erica? I, I, I wish somebody talked to me up in here. Can you get a message through to God for me when I don't know how I'm going to make it to see the next? Somebody say, I need somebody that can get a prayer through. When you get through prancing and dancing and, and shaking and twerking and all that, can you get a prayer through for a brother? I'm telling you, Greta Victor, I'm too old for this now. I need, I need what you call substance. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. So I want to encourage, I want to encourage you, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage all my single folk and I speak peace to your spirit. I speak peace to your spirit and don't be moved by what it looks like. Because anything can dress up and look nice. I want to see you without your wig on, baby. I want to see your attitude when you in trouble. I want to see how you conduct yourself in your business. I want to see how you handle your daddy and your mama. I want to see how you talk to your kids. I hear you, Andre. I want to know if you can cook. 
I don't want no McDonald's. I don't want no burger. Don't go to the, I want some food. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. <laughs> so to all my single folks, especially for those of you who've been divorced, you know what I'm talking about. You know the feeling. So I pray that God continue to give you strength. That God continue to cover you. For anybody who's dealing with the spirit of depression, I rebuke that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it right now. You ought to wave your hand across this, across this parking lot real quick in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the spirit of depression. You are more important than you have given yourself credit for. Your life is not based on the affirmation of some man or some woman. Your affirmation comes from God above. God is the one that made you. God is the one who stands you up. The God is the one that's going to open the door for you. You stand on the word of God. There is none perfect but you stand on that how dare anybody turn their nose up at you for mistakes that you made all of us have made mistakes up in here all of us have made mistakes I wish somebody put their hands together all of us have made mistakes along the way because some of us are bolder than telling than others so we thank God Come on and put your hands together. I'm done with you. God bless you. Yes. Come on, let's welcome our pastor. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Was that awesome? Listen, are we off to a magnanimous start of our family enrichment? Listen, you are all right, singles. You're okay. Married and divorced. You're okay. How dare you? How dare you feel like that you are second choice? How dare you feel like you've done a bad thing? The reason why you're back to your place of singleness. You are saved. You love God. But you also feel and have feelings. I hope and pray that this has enriched your life. This has blessed your life. I know it has mine. What a blessing. Peter Johnson. What a blessing from Andre Gaskin. What a blessing for Elder Bridget Smith. What a blessing for Pastor Mark Twyman. It's a different walk. It's a different season. It's a different place. So those of you who are saved, single, and not satisfied, it's okay. Because just like Elder Bridget said, God is going to always send you your Boaz and not your bozo. He'll send the bozo. God doesn't send the bozo. You pick the bozo. You pick the bozo and every woman and every man, amen, at some point have had a bozo. Come on now. Or a Dracula. Dracula come out at night. Dracula, put that Dracula on. And a Drusilla. Some of the brothers have had you still. But Pastor Mark spoke so eloquently and said some things as you get older doesn't matter. What you want and what we need is substance. Say, so Lord, I've gotten past how fine you are. I've gotten past how good looking you are. See, at some point you won't get past that. Because if you keep living, things are going to start growing. Your stomach, your All right. start growing, backwards. things start growing if you keep living. Anything that's healthy will grow. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Anything that's healthy will grow. And so things start growing. So you're not going to be as fine as you were at the very beginning. You're not going to look as strong as you were at the very beginning. 
So you're going to need some substance. You're going to need somebody. Amen. That can you handle me in my time of sickness? I need to know where you'll be right there. If I happen to not be on my feet, will you push me in a wheelchair? Will you roll me around? So you, that goes to the heart of the person, the mind of the person. And start investigating people stronger. Andre said it real profoundly. He said, I'll wait. I'll wait. He said, I'll slow walk it. Did y'all hear what he said? He said, you got to slow walk it in. You slow walk it in because God has what he has for you. And, it's, and if it's for you, it's for you. No devil in hell can take it away or, or turn it back. Whatever the case may be, it will come back around again. If you are divorced, you've been divorced, it's okay. You can live again and you can start all over again. You can regroup and come back, amen, to a place that you once was or to a place that you want to be. But first, you got to be happy within yourself. Be happy within yourself. Know that you are worth every bit of everything. That you are worth it. Make sure that you know that you are enough. See, no matter, no matter how the next man or the next woman may look, I'm enough. I know what I bring. You got to have all those things in you. I'm enough. I'm enough. As a matter of fact, I'm almost more than enough. Woo. Come on, you gotta have that. Amen. But what God has for you is for you. I am, I am just blessed to hear the words from these men and these women. Amen. Aren't you blessed today? Our enrichment month, family enrichment, is kicked off. You don't want to miss either Sunday. No, you don't. Hallelujah. Next Sunday, we will have the blended family. Amen. The blended family is going to come and they're going to show us how to bring his, mine, and ours all together. His, mine, and ours. Amen. Amen. You got to know how to do that thing. Amen. Because it's rough. It's difficult. But we are here to give you tools to help you make it through. Then the third Sunday again, we're going to have a marriage that lasts forever. Amen. How to keep this thing together. We're going to have, amen, Deacon Al will come. Amen. Rita's going to come. They're going to give us a little marriage tip. Amen. And then my Uncle Joe and my Aunt Lynn, they're going to come and they're going to tell us how can we make this thing last forever with our interracial couple. Amen. Come on. Isn't that some good stuff? Oh, this is going to bless us. This is going to bless us. And on the fourth Sunday, we're going to come back and bless you real good. Listen, if you're there without a church home, if you're here without a church home, you can come to Jesus right now. The scriptures say the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. You can come to him right now. Amen. Right here on the parking lot. But if you want to come to Jesus right now, right there, in your living room, in your bedroom, in your family room, you can do it. You can do it right there. We are looking for souls. Amen. This is about the kingdom of God and souls. You can repeat after me. You can say, A, I admit I am a sinner needing to be saved. B, I believe you, God, raised Jesus from the dead. C, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord, Savior, and Master. Come into my heart. Come into my spirit. Come into my soul. I receive you into my life. I receive you into my heart. Thank you for saving me. He's still in the saving business. Thank you for saving me. If you did those things, amen, we'll be more than happy to send you to any church that you would like to become a part of. But if not, hit those likes, hit those likes, hit those likes, hit those smiling faces, amen. Let us know your name, let us know your point of location, and we will make sure that we will reach back out to you, amen, to make sure that you are located and that you are secure in a place of safety, amen, amen. What God has for me, come on, it is for me. Tell somebody, I don't want nobody else's. I just want what God has for me. Oh, what God has for me. What God has for me. Come on, we get ready to go. We get ready to go. Weren't you blessed? Weren't you blessed? Was this awesome or what?
for me. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he lifted it up, he broke it, he said, take ye, eat all of this. This is my body. On that same night, he lifted up the bottle of wine. He took it. He said, take ye, eat all of this. This is my blood. The scripture says, after they had eaten and drank, they sang a hymn and they went out. Father, we thank you and we praise you now for this great time of celebration. We thank you, O oh God, for what you're doing and how you're doing it. We bless you and we honor you. We thank you for on the night that you were portrayed, God, that you sacrificed your body, that you sacrificed your blood for the remission of our sins. So, God, we thank you now for doing it. We thank you, oh God, that you satisfied. That you was the perpetuation. That you was the satisfaction of us. We thank you and we bless you. Now, God, go with us on the furtherance of this day. Keep us, hold us, mold us, and make us. And to who you would have us to be. And then, God, open up the hearts of your people. Oh God, those who desire to be married, those who desire to walk with someone throughout life and throughout life journey, you know what they need and who they need. So God, we lay it over in your hands. We bless you and we honor you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, dominion, majesty, and power, both now and forever, and we all said amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Have a good day. Have a good week. Have a good week, people of God. Have a good week. Have a good week. We'll see you Wednesday night. Amen. Pastor Mark will be on Wednesday night with Mark My Word. Amen. Amen. That's going to be Pastor Mark. When you see Mark My Word, that's Pastor Mark of Wednesday night. I will be over at the Mount Pleasant Church on Wednesday night. Amen. At a conference. Mark My Word. Wednesday night, 7.15.